It's Tuesday in the wood shop. If you watched yesterday's video, you would have heard me say that I need to get on to a few other things besides building frames. This is some of those things. There's a couple different things I'm doing here uh, for today. I'm accomplishing about the same thing on both of them. What I'm doing is involves all those boxes that I just got. I bought 72 boxes. Ten of them were undipped boxes. They were all 10 frame deeps and 62 of them were dipped boxes. What I've done is I've cut them down, at least some of them. I've cut 20 of the dipped boxes down to medium depth, which is 6 and 5 eighths inches. I've cut the undipped boxes, which is, this is one of them, down to 6 and 5 eighths plus 3 quarter, which is 7 and 3 eighths, if my math is right. So this is one out. You can may, maybe see it's a little deeper than a, a medium. It's a 3 quarters of an inch deeper than a medium. What's going to happen with this is I'm going to <coughs> divide this in four. I'm going to run a divider both ways. So then I'll have four small mating nukes and I'll create an entrance on each of the four sides for those mating nukes. They'll have mini frames. I'm going to take my standard frames, cut them in half, remill the ends just because I overthink things. And so anyway that'll make a nice little mating nuke. So that's what's going to happen to these uh, undipped ones. I've got 10 of these so I'll have 40 mating nukes when I'm done. So what am I doing with the cutoffs, you may ask? So I've got all of these pieces. These are what I call feeder shims. Typically in the spring, we'll put this on a hive when we take it out of the, the wintering building. This gives us space for patties and sugar cakes if the colony so needs extra feed. I like to feed sugar cakes instead of trying to feed syrup. They don't take syrup very well in the cold. There's not much other than just cutting it down, making a nice job of it, uh, except for one thing. The only other thing I've done here is I've driven a screw through it. I've drilled a pilot hole so I don't split that soft pine, but I've drilled that screw right down in there. And the reason I've done that is so that I can let that screw protrude here a little. And I want that screw to protrude so that when I put that on the hive, it'll sit there. In the spring things don't just sit together so well like they do in the summer. That glue thing that the bees do with the propolis, that's not happening. And I may have to move these around with the shims on. I don't want things sliding around. So that's why I'm just driving the screw through. When I put that on a box, just give it a whack. That screw goes into that soft pine below and sticks to it. I can't push the other end in because there's a knot on the other side. It's always something isn't there. So these are about two inch shims. I've driven the screws, stacked them all up, wrapped them together. These are a little thicker. They're probably about three I guess inch high. I don't like cutting these things. They got nails in them. You have to be real careful where you cut. And the nails are usually in the same spot in every box. But that's usually. And this is what happens when it's not always. This is my saw stop break. See how it's all mangled here and deformed? The blade hit a nail and that made the computer think that I touched the blade with my finger and uh, so it set off the brake and that heavy spring throws the brake into the blade it sits in kind of like this the blade is spinning past it when that brake hits the blade it stops and the arbor on the saw stop actually pivots so as soon as it hits that the blade disappears below the table surface. So you just hear a bang and then everything is quiet because your blade is stopped, it's gone and the saw is shut off. $106.
is the cheapest one I could find. Lee Valley. I blew one of those last year too. I'm not too happy. I gotta be more careful. Thankfully it wasn't, you know, because I touched the blade. It was just because I was being careless. I hit that nail. The saw stop, you can run it in what's called bypass mode. When I start the saw up each time, I can go through a little easy process that actually takes both hands. You actually have to get down, look at the display and use both hands to turn the saw on in such a way that the brake computer system is not energized. And if you touch the blade then, then you're going to lose a finger. But if a nail touches the blade, it's not going to cost you $100, probably 110 almost by the time tax. And your blade. I got the blade out of this cartridge. I'm going to take it to my saw sharpener, uh, have them take a look at it. It looks okay to me. Uh, generally, I won't reuse them. It's a fairly new blade, so I don't just want to trash it unless uh, until I get a second opinion. So anyway, not, enough about my saw stop. <clears throat> and that, and that's all I'm doing today. I uh, I haven't been videoing all my work. It's just running boxes through the table saw. Pretty boring stuff. It's nice to not be building frames today. I need to route a 3 8 dado on every side because I'm dividing it two ways to make four sections. So what I've done here is I've taken my 3 8 bit in my router and because my plywood is going to be 3 8 my plywood divider is going to be 3 8 and I've cut spacers, one for the end and a different one for the side. The side one is larger of course and the spacer plus my router base to the center of my bit is equal to halfway uh, between the two sides here. So my data will end up in the center. My depth on my bit is set to the exact same depth as the uh, frame rest set back here. You see that uh, I actually cut straight through to the handhold. That's fine. For what I'm doing with these, that's uh, no problem at all. Here they are, all ten stacked up. Four dados running each one. You can see here on this one what I've done. They're fairly, fairly deep dado. But for future, I'm going to save my patterns here, my little uh, spacers, so that when I go to do three eighths dados in boxes. In the future, I can just grab these off the shelf and I don't have to go through the whole setup routine on that again. A uh, solid piece goes side to side, and that's the only one that does. And these pieces 
will go and butt up against it. Then I have some smaller pieces here that will slide in and butt up against this center and there's one on either side. So what happens is this plywood forms the frame rest. There's a frame rest here and a frame rest here. So the plywood forms the opposing frame rest. Then the new frames that I cut will be a standard frame cut in half minus a bit and milled to go together on that end. That's going to be a bit of a job. There's uh, what I'm doing with for these mating nukes. I cut them deeper than a medium because I want to put a solid bottom on this but I don't want to spend a lot of time building a bottom. I'll likely go with a half inch plywood bottom screwed on and that's why I left three quarters of an inch more depth in this box than a standard medium so that I don't have to have then a built up bottom with a shim etc because these are going to be self contained this box really won't come off of the bottom with any regularity it might come off from time to time for cleaning in the spring perhaps but that's about it so there we go